Welcome back. Mutton Chop Piper here. All right, today's lesson is going to be how to deep clean your pipe or clean your pipe monthly. Now, before we get started, I want to let you know that I'm probably going to break this video up into two or three different videos because there's a lot of information that I got to pass on to you. What is deep cleaning? Why, why do we want to do it? Well, I did do a video on a daily cleaning. And on the daily cleaning, your main reason to clean your pipe before you put it away after you've smoked it for the day is to get the dottle, which is any tobacco bits out of the bottom of the bowl, and to sop up any moisture that has gathered in the uh, bowl or the, in, the, um, in the bit or the shank. So you want to clean all that out. So that way, when you put it away, it will dry a lot faster. But if you continue to do that 15, 20 bowls and you don't deep clean, uh, you're going to get some residual stuff that remains in the pipe. Uh, some dottles, some moisture will uh, take a lot, take with it some of that ash that's maybe traveled up through the shank and it will be on the sides of the inside of your pipe. Eventually what will happen is when you put tobacco in the pipe it will taint or sully the tobacco taste. It'll taste soury maybe, uh, the tobacco will not taste the same as you're used to. You're like well wait a minute this is supposed to be sweet. It's got like a little sour taste. And you're gonna think that it's the tobacco has gone bad. Don't do that. First thing say now have I deep cleaned my pipe in a while and if you can't remember the last time you did it go ahead and deep clean your pipe let it rest and then fill it with tobacco and see if that takes care of the problem alright um, before we get started I want to show you what I keep all my pipe cleaning supplies in uh, I was uh, I'm a former Marine, 20-year uh, veteran, uh, retired. And for those that were in the military, you know that you come away out of the military with some things. Uh, I never did because I didn't think I was going to use any of it in my civilian life. And besides, i be frank, I didn't have room for it. The only thing I did keep is this ammunition box. Uh, it was broken and discarded, so I picked it up, took it home, fixed it, and now that's what I put all of my cleaning supplies in uh, to keep them safe. Now, I would suggest that you do the same, so that way you'll know where everything is, and it's in one central location. Okay, well, as you can see, I've got quite a bit of stuff here on the table, and I want to explain to you each item. Okay, the first thing that you're going to need is uh, you're going to need this yellow, or not, doesn't have to be yellow, but uh, I have this uh, microfiber towel down on the table to protect it from any solution or uh, any peat, any you know ash flying. I just I want to protect the table underneath. Okay, uh, next thing is a paper towel. Some Q-tips, some antiseptic wipes. Now you can get these at uh, any drugstore and they're relatively inexpensive. Some tapered, bristled pipe cleaners. The bristled pipe cleaners have little sharp knoblies on it. And what they're designed to do is to get all that, scrape all that stuff that's on the sides of your shank and um, uh, of your bit. They don't have to be uh, tapered. I use tapered because the orifices in some of my pipes are quite large and I need something that's going to get in there and clean all that stuff out. Then uh, tapered regular pipe cleaners. Again, they don't have to be tapered, but I use them because of the orifice. My tri tool, my shovel, my pick and my tamper. 
And this is my solution. What this solution is designed to do is to help break up any of the stuff that's adhered to the walls. This solution is, is my own creation. Um, I was, it was suggested to me by other pipe smokers that you use grain alcohol to clean out your pipe. So I started using grain alcohol. Well, I noticed that when I put tobacco in the pipe after it had set and uh, uh, rested and uh, was ready to smoke, that it kind of sullied the taste of the tobacco. It, I, I tasted this alcohol instead of the tobacco. So I went online and I found a guy who, what, what he does is he cuts his with a liqueur or a uh, or a alcohol that's flavored. So I came up with a solution, 70% grain alcohol, which is I think either 150 or 180 proof, and 30% of a liqueur alcohol that is a flavored with hazelnut. So it's 70-30 mix. Now, when I started using this, it was a lot better because it made, it made my aromatic tobaccos a little bit sweeter and I could taste the different components of that tobacco. And then when I used, then when I filled my pipe with an English blend, um, it added a slight sweetness to the English blend. So, but it wasn't enough to turn people off of it, I don't think. So, um, that's my solution. I also use a microfiber towel just to wipe things down with. And the final thing is this. I'm going to keep this a secret till the end of the pipe cleaning ritual. And you'll find out what this is later. I would also recommend that you keep a trash can handy because you're going to have some nasty pipe cleaners and some nasty Q-tips. All right. As you see, as you can see, I've got all my pipes lined up here. And what I do is I pick a Saturday or a Sunday or a day that uh, I have a couple of hours, watch TV, listen to music, and I sit and clean my pipes. All these have been cleaned, except for this one. I've smoked it. I don't know, four or five times and figured it could use a deep cleaning. All right. First thing I need to caution you about, and this is a hard and fast rule. You must follow this rule. Never separate your mouthpiece from the main bowl while it is hot. Let the bowl cool down. If you separate it while it's hot, you're going to either crack your shank or the mortise and tenon will get either so loose that it won't, it won't hold the pipe. It'll just fall off or it'll make it so tight. You can't get it to screw back in. So please absolutely do not separate your mouthpiece from the regular bowl until it has cooled completely down. Make sure that it's nice and cold. Okay, the first thing that I do is I look inside the bowl and see uh, how my carbon cake's coming. Um, I look at the very bottom to check to see if there's any bits of tobacco. If there is, then I take the little pick part of my tri-tool and I go down in there and I kind of pick away very softly to not disturb that carbon cake and then I shake it off into my trash can. Once I do that, I kind of look at the condition of the pipe, just kind of make sure there's no scratches or dents or dings. And then I separate the pipe. Okay. So the first thing I do is I'm going to be using this solution. That solution will take off the carbon cake at the bottom. So what I do is I take my paper towel and I rip a piece off of it, about that big. Then I take it and I kind of put it into like a little pointy ball and I shove it into my bowl until it, until I can tell that it's at the very bottom. Okay. Then I open up 
my solution, get the tapered end, put it into the solution, just very little, just, just about that much. Now, make sure that this solution does not touch the outside of your bowl. It will take the finish off and you'll have a pipe with a bunch of plotches on it. Blotches, sorry. So you stick it in there and then you just kind of work it back and forth. Now you've got this piece of, of uh, paper towel in there so you can kind of go until it hits that paper towel. Make sure, it, make sure you scrub really good. And then take the other end, scrub as well. Do this until this comes out clean. Throw that away. Use a regular pipe cleaner to sop up all that, uh, all that, uh, all your solution and any anything that it has, it might have dislodged. Make sure it's clean before you throw it, before you finish. Um, cleaning that out. Just make sure that you come out with a clean pipe cleaner. All right. Then you see how that hole's a little bit deeper, a little bit wider than normal. Uh, you could use a pipe cleaner, but that's what I use my Q-tips for. Just dip it very, just, just a little. And then I go in there and I kind of roll it around and scrub it out really good. Then I turn it around and I wipe all that solution that I just put in there out. Okay, once it comes out clear or clean, you're good. All right, now we're moving on to the stem. Uh, again, you want to take your uh, your pipe cleaner that has the bristles on it and just, just a little, just make sure it's a little, put it in there and you can scrub back and forth. And then now this one's a little bit difficult because it won't come out the end. Let's see if I can get it coaxed out the end there. Now it's almost there. Come on. Okay. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you get the end to come out like that. And what you want to do is as you've gone back and forth, it's dislodged a bunch of that stuff that's in your stem. Well, if you pull it back out, all you're doing is you're just pulling it all back in. So you want to continue out the same way, the opposite way that it came. Okay? Like that. Make sure that you don't have any of that stuff on your fingers before you handle it again. Then take a regular pipe cleaner. And you can go back and forth if you like. See? See how it's at that end? I, I put the pipe cleaner in at the bottom and went out this way. Well, I want to continue that. I want to bring it out the same way that I put it in, or the opposite way that I put it in. So that way it pulls all that stuff out one way instead of just pulling it back to where it just puts it right back into the stem. Okay, then you, you have the mortise and tin. Um, you want to make sure that that's clean. I've already done one, so you just kind of lightly scrub that down a little bit and then use the other end to wipe it off. Throw that away. I usually use my towel to make sure it's good and dry. And then I take another, another Q-tip and I go on the inside here. I clean that out really good. And then I take the other side and I clean that out or I make sure that uh, I get all that wetness out of there, that solution. Throw it down. Okay, so that's basically that part of the cleaning. Um, I've come to a good stopping point. Um, so I will see you at part two of our pipe cleaning, our deep pipe cleaning.